Let's look at some scenarios that involve different types of image sizing and setting of resolution. Here's a typical image that's saved with medium resolution from the camera. If you take a look at the info palette, it shows the file size in megabytes, the physical dimensions in the units that you've specified, and the pixels per inch resolution, 180 pixels per inch in this case. This is fairly typical of the digital camera images when you first open them in Photoshop. To make changes to any of these parameters, you have to access the image size dialog. In Photoshop CS2, you can type in a handy shortcut of Command Option I or Control Alt I or simply choose it from the image menu. You can see that it's placed a random size here that you can fix very easily to make it a bit more meaningful for your printing needs. The first thing I do is to uncheck Resample Image down at the bottom. Then plug in the known variable. If you know the physical output size, then enter it here in width and height using the appropriate units. As long as the aspect ratio is maintained here, you only need to enter one axis and you'll see that it automatically sets the height value and the resolution for you. What's happened is that since you've specified no change to the pixel structure here down at the bottom, all you've done is gone from larger size pixels, which were laid out at 150 pixels to an inch, to a smaller image with smaller sized pixels that work out to be 378 pixels per inch. Meanwhile, the pixel dimensions and the file size has not changed at all from what we started with. The next logical step in this process is to get the resolution in line with the output device. At present, it's set to 378 pixels per inch. If you're shooting for a range of 225 to 300 pixels per inch, then this is the time to analyze the image content to decide what you might pick. For glinty reflections and crisp transitions in art, I always suggest a higher factor, so we'll go with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. First, check the resample checkbox, and then type in the desired resolution. You'll see that checking resample tells Photoshop that it needs to manage the size and the resolution independently of each other. In other words, it changes the pixel structure as needed to accomplish the resizing. In this case, it's having to throw away the additional pixels, which you can verify by looking up here at the pixel dimensions. What used to be 11 megabytes will now be resampled to just under 7 megabytes in size. The only other thing to verify is that the interpolation option below is set to bicubic sharper. This is a newer choice and does a fine job with making the edges of the artwork crisp and uniform. I'm going to go ahead and reset this dialog now by holding down the option or the alt key and clicking on reset. Now let's talk about upsampling or increasing the pixel content of the image. Ideally, you'll want to reacquire the image at a suitable higher resolution. But if that's not possible in the real world, then you'll just have to make the most of the situation. Here's what I recommend. Step one, check resample and set the interpolation to bicubic smoother. Step number two, type in the desired values. and you'll see that the file size will grow in size considerably. Click OK and then apply any final sharpening to the image. Next I want to give you a quick tour of using the crop tool to resize and resample an image in a way that's very convenient. Type C on the keyboard to access the crop tool. You'll notice that at the very top in the options bar, there are some choices that you may and may not have used before. You can quickly load a preset that provides some common crop ratios or create your own very easily. For instance, this one is great to resize snapshots. If it's set up to be vertical, you can always swap the orientation by clicking on this arrow button. Then I can even change the resolution to suit my own printing needs.
And finally, you can save this as a new preset so it's easy to reuse. To do this, I'll click on the tool preset and click on the new button. Now give it a name that you'll spot easily in the list and click OK. Now you're ready to crop, resize, and resample all in one pass.